Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT podcast, the best sports podcast in New Jersey. Tonight we got a special guest with us, none other than Coach Rob Allen, one of the more prominent trainers, coaches in that pro basketball space. How are you doing? I'm good, brother. Uh, I appreciate you having me on tonight uh, on the short notice, so uh, I, I appreciate you. Um, it's been a long day, <laughs> figuratively, um, but I'm just blessed to be here, and I appreciate you having me. We appreciate you hopping on. You know, it really has been a long day for you, so thank you for even taking time out to hop on with us. For those that don't know, what is your basketball origin story? When did you fall in the game? Um, make sure I got you right because you broke out for a second, but uh, my origin – um, I grew up, I grew up, I'm from Selma, Alabama. Um, I grew up in a basketball family. Um, my dad, um, my dad, my uncle, uh, all, they, they were basketball players. Um, you know, they were street ball legends, as you can say. Um, and, uh, so my dad was the one to put the ball in my hand and then my uncle had, two sons so we all basketball players and my cousin played um he was all american in high school uh number number one or number two point guard in the country at the time uh doc robinson and he played at auburn university as well so um just you know just grew up I always watch basketball each and every day uh nba on nbc uh College basketball. Uh, my dad' favorite player was JoJo White. Uh, he was a Boston Celtic, so I knew early about the Celtics, and you know, just clung on to the game, enjoyed watching it, and you know, the Jordan wave happened. Became a Jordan fan, and then as I got older and started learning a little bit, I started knowing I was a point guard. I wasn't gonna be Jordan, so started watching, you know, PGs. Um, you know the, you know the AIs, the Mark Jacksons, the Stephon Marbury's, the Damon Stoudemire's. The I mean, just just trying to pay attention to those guys, and you know, watching high school. You know, as I got older, you know, getting used to like the the rankings of high school basketball players, mm-hmm. uh, understanding like one of the first classes. You know trying to get into it. I used to watch prep hoops back in the day. It used to come mm. up, uh, like so that's when I would introduce to like Will Bynum and uh Luther Head and them tight guys. And then I started counter because my cousin was a top guard as well. So start like paying attention to recruiting classes and Andre his class on Andre Barrett and uh, Omar Cook and them type dudes. So, you know, just started just watching at the end. Just basically grew up, man. Just grew up watching basketball all my life. And, you know, now I'm here doing what, you know, we all set out to do. Um, so it's a blessing, basically. Hey, so all of that just sounds like you love, you love the game of basketball. Mm-hmm. What about it do you love most? Like, what draws you to that? To the game basketball. Um, basically, man, the competitiveness, the camaraderie, um, just you know, being a part of a team, uh, the notoriety, man, just everything. It's just everything to me personally. Um, you know, just from me playing, just being in the gym each and every day, working on my craft and seeing how much better. I got see how much better, you know, my family got people I train, uh, you know, just just watching it, just being around it. It's it's something that I can't explain, honestly, man. It's just it's just a blessing to do what you do each and every day. Something that you love is not a job. So um just love basketball and I, I and I continue to the day I die to continue to work in it. So um, I know everybody don't get to do their dream job, but, uh, you know, God has allowed me to do mine and uh, just going to continue to keep on going. 
Now, for you, when did it transition to get into the coaching and the training aspect, being that you actually played, you played at the collegiate level, when did it transition for you to actually get into coaching and training? <laughs> That's a funny. So it's a it's a story that got me to it. Um, as I um, when I had my uh, first daughter, um, basically, um, you know, I had to work. So uh, I had my degree in accounting. People don't know that. Everybody just think I just did in basketball. Well, I got my degree in accounting though. So uh, and I got my degree in accounting, and I had to work. And at that time. You know, I was uh, I was married and, you know, trying to figure things out. And uh, I just decided, man, you know, I started working and started working with my uncle and doing jobs that I didn't even get, wasn't even dealing with accounting or anything. Then I started seeing, like, people. One of the first people I ever saw, like, train was a uh, handle life journey. Um, I seen him on YouTube, like doing some ball handling drills and things. And I just used to watch sometimes just watch people doing them. I'm like, dang, I, I do some, some of that stuff. Like my college teammates can vouch for it. Like I used to do a lot of stuff back in the day, not thinking, just doing it on my own. And man, as an accountant, just sitting behind the desk each and every day, I'm just like, bro, this ain't it. I can't do it too much longer. So I wanted to give back. I wanted to get back to, you know, to my, you know, I wanted to get back to the kids here. Like, I was like, I just want to get into basketball. I want to get back to the kids. So, uh, what ended up happening is I got with an AAU team called the Cobb Purple Knights. Still know the name. Uh, and they weren't, they weren't, they weren't very good at the time. So, uh, I just thought I just wanted to, I just wanted to help. So, basically, uh, it was like a little A grade team. Um, they weren't very good, and I just started working with them a little bit. Just working with them, it wasn't no training or anything. So um, after the season was over, I had a kid because some of the kids used to watch me hoop. Cause they used to watch me hoop at like the the rec and different things. So mm-hmm. uh, I had one kid. His name was Ricky Sherman. And he said he called me one day just out the blue. He was like, uh, he was the one that gave my name called Rob. And he hit me. He was like, Yo, Coach Rob, could you uh could you work me out? And um I said, Work you out? What you talking about? Can you train me? I was like, bro, I don't know what training is. Like, <laughs> what is that? Because you know, I come from an area, it wasn't no trainers, none of that. So man, he was just like, I said, so what is training to you? He was like, Man, just show me the stuff you do. So I said, all right, I can do that. So, man, I had him for one year, just him, nobody else. Training him for one year, trying to get him better each and every day. And I started seeing how much better he got. So then in tune, that for me turned into like, okay, pretty good at this. So um, just was training him at LA Fitness each and every day for like a year. Then other people at LA Fitness started seeing me train him, and then it just kind of blew up from there. And then uh, we kind of turned everything around for me. I uh, met a guy by the name of Chris Williams. He's over Holiday Hoops giving here in uh, in um, in Atlanta. So he had, so I was with him, and uh, he told me he had an AAU team. Um, young AAU team, 15 U. They was like one of the best AAU teams in the country. And um, he put me with this guard by the name of Ashton Hagens. And then that's when everything changed for me. So when I started working him out, it's just the floodgates opened in. Like, so people started seeing me train him. He got to be number one point guard in the country, went to Kentucky. And that's when I started adding other players, and that was it. So if I would have told you I'd be doing this right now about 10 years ago, I'd be like, nah, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. So, yep, that's how I started. That is dope, especially to to see that it was small beginnings Mm -hmm. to where it's at now. And it was just literally like, hey, no thing about I love the game of basketball. I'm just trying to give back. I'm just trying to help out. And it actually 
now turned into a career for you. Now this yeah. is what you do. Mm -hmm. So it's dope always seeing that in a place of you was just trying to serve and help out. Mm -hmm. yeah. that 10 years later, this is where we'll be at. This is where we'll come from. Mm -hmm. In your profession, specifically with basketball, we know how important shooting is. And we mm -hmm. know how vital it is in today's game. What is the best way you think that you try to help your clients to improve their shooting to become better shooters? Oh, that's a that's a pretty loaded question. But uh, I would basically say, um, I think a lot of a lot of times when people look at it, I think a lot of you know everybody wants you to have that perfect shot. Uh, I don't think there's ever a perfect. Some people have it, some people don't. So it's about how you follow through uh, about your balance your stance. So what I try to do is watch a lot of film. Like and I tell trainers and trainers told me, um, make sure you watch film each and every day. Uh, Cause it helps you, you know, be able to be able to break down a player. So um, the biggest thing for me is the follow through the elbow, trying to see um, if it's in or out. Some people like to shoot out here. Some people shoot in here. So it just depends on how, what makes them comfortable? Because uh, everybody has different shots. Like, I mean, you watch Reggie Miller shoot. Reggie Miller ain't had the greatest form, but Reggie Miller could shoot. But he did the necessary things. Like, he had his elbow in when he did shoot. I think his shot was flicked, but he wouldn't miss. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just you know having the ball roll off your fingertips, um, having just enough space, and shooting hand. Cause like I do a lot and I shoot with my fingertips. I don't shoot with my palm. So um, it's just different ways of breaking down people's shots, um, working on release time. Um, you know, I think that's very vital for the next level, being able to shoot quicker, uh, being able to be able to dip the ball and get it to your shooting pocket as fast as possible. Um, so it's different adages of trying to get somebody shot um, fixed, but, I could write a whole book about that. So <laughs> it's it's just different ways. It's just as you as a uh, developer, you got to know how that what works for you. So I feel like, and I don't discredit anybody. Um, I've seen a lot of guys, man. Like I'm not discrediting like a lethal shooter or anything. I just feel like if you're a development guy you should be able to teach people how to shoot now are there experts in certain things i believe that yeah there is but i believe i've seen people that shoot just as good as like can shoot like just like him and they can teach people how to shoot so i don't think it's a i don't think it's a hard to do i just think mm -hmm. you have to be able to you got to be a student of the game and see it so that's how i feel about it yeah i think that is a vital thing because watching the draft yesterday, today, one of the main things that they mentioned, and, hey, this is a 6'9 guy that could shoot the rock. This is a 6'6 guy that could shoot a rock. Oh, this guy, hey, he got to work on his jumper. Those mm -hmm. that have the jumper now, it's like if you could shoot, you kind of always got a spot in the league. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, times have definitely changed. Uh, times have definitely changed. Like, um the warriors changed it for everybody let's just be real that's who changed it once Stephen started shooting them three i and you can tell me if i'm lying or not go to your local recreation center your local la fitness your local whatever you want said whatever you want everybody shoots threes like it's not even nobody <laughs> it's no post up even the big dudes shoot threes now. Like I had to stop playing pickup. I'm just like, bro, like you six foot nine and you out here shooting threes, like going to post. And I mean, it's just like the game has evolved. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it's good for the game, but um, I think it goes and flows. Like I do believe. I people say they don't believe. It. I believe big men will start coming back a little bit. The traditional. I think everything goes in waves. Like um like clothes you know uh you know lacoste right yeah they used to sell lacoste and walmart when i was a kid 
people don't even know that they I didn't know that they sell in Walmart they with the gator right yeah and they rebranded it and they had like their own store and the shirts were running like 150 for just a golf shirt like watch you you think I'm lying do you know what Jabol jeans are you heard of yeah, those? yeah I've heard of those I've heard of those gonna come back watch when I tell you food boot and came back it's like I'm being honest like stuff will yeah. fade out and then it'll come back and it's just like oh I didn't even I'm like bro we was wearing that in such and such time mm -hmm. so you'll see it. it's eventually gonna come back I just think it just it changes with the wind but that's what's popping now which is shooting so uh, if you're going to, uh, I'm being honest, man, if you're going to be effective in this game, you got to be able to shoot. Now, if you can't shoot, it's got to be some things that you do that makes a team value. So what I mean by that is you got to be active. You got to be able to play defense. You got to, like, you got to find your niche and you got to be elite at your niche. If you're not elite at your niche, it won't work. So, um, but you'll have an upper hand if you can shoot the basketball. Nah, I I know exactly what you're talking about. I literally the last three months have been helping in my town with um basketball workouts for first to fifth grade, and then it was sixth to eighth. Mm -hmm. From first all the way to eighth. Mm -hmm. They're coming the shot as three pointers. I'm like, yo, you could barely get the ball up to the rim as is. Mm -hmm. Why are we shooting out here? Mm -hmm. Eighth grader, he's about six foot four. Tall as one, and hit. He's going to keep growing. Hey, bro, you you not gonna say six four? You it's little always. post move, little hook shot, little something. Nah, mm -hmm. coach, I I gotta be able to shoot. I want to be able to shoot. Mm -hmm. I think I think we gotta be, I think we gotta be able to teach both though, because I feel like when I try to tell my players, once you one dimensional, it's easy to guard you. So I believe with certain players, like we gotta start putting a little bit like they'll tell you the mid range is dead, but it actually isn't. I mean, I still see team shoot mid-range shots like you know but everybody's trying to outshoot the other person so you see it in college basketball you see it in the nba now like you see a lot of teams taking the threes over the two so i mean it, it's the game has changed the game has evolved you just got to get with it or get left behind that's true now when you have these select players different players that come in that want to get work in during the summer, especially how do you balance of working on that skill work? So they get better individually, but also working on what, you know, the team may want them to do to sit the role. Um, I think it depends on the person um, and the player. Like for instance, you have veterans and you have rookies, you know, you have your, in between guys so i say probably by the year three you know what you're gonna be in the league like if you if we just talking about the nba right you're gonna know what you are you're gonna know if you're gonna be a three and d hustle shoot play defense like i mean because i think we have to be re realistic because a lot of things that i see and i see people doing is not what they're gonna do in the game and I evolved from that because I used to be the guy that used to do stuff like that. I used to have guys doing stuff that they weren't going to do. And this before I started working with the highest level players. So for me, it was just it was just basically saying, okay, we're going to work on this move. You're going to dribble here, do this, do this. And like, if you watch film, they shoot corner threes. They shoot lifts. They shoot drills. They shoot goals. They shoot off the goal screen. They shoot off a pin down, like. That's all they're going to do because if you really look at it, if we just watching the optics of the NBA, every team has go-to guys. So it's different if I'm working per se, just give you an example, like, you know, like a, like a Jay Crowder, right? He's a mm -hmm. vet. So what he's going to do is what? Catch and shoot. He plays with Giannis and Damian Lillard. So is he's going to ISO? No. 
He's got to always be ready to shoot. He's got to always be ready to set screens, pop out shots, do different things, or per se, work training a guy like like a LeBron, or Anthony Edwards, or who else? Um, who else in the league? Like they they can play one on one, like a Paul George or Kawhi mm-hmm. Leonard or. One of them guys, they gonna have a ball, so they can do a little bit more. You can work with a lot of more things with them, like some a lot of ISO moves, or you know, like uh, like JD Davidson, like that I worked with since high school. Like you know, he gonna come off screens, and you know, he gonna have to knock down the shot, get to the rim, shoot floaters, like attack the rim. You know, just you know, and then sometimes he might have to get by a defender and do one or two things. So. Um, like it's it's different. Every player is different. Like each and every player in the league is different. So you got to know how to devise a plan to say, okay, this is what you're good at. I feel like you have to be elite at one thing and mm-hmm. be good in the others or great in the others. But you have to be elite at one thing. So I also believe too, there's no need of doing stuff that you ain't gonna do. Like, I always feel like you can get better on your ball handling, but how much ball handling you going to do on a certain team? But I'm not saying not to neglect the ball handling, if you get what I'm saying. Like, it, it's ways to, you know, incorporate ball handling in your workouts or, you know, floaters in your workouts. or. But you want to know what's going to get you paid. Like, don't go out of ordinary, you know. So then in college, it's different, you know. I think, you know, it depends on what system you play in. Uh-huh. Um, like where you gonna get your shots, what spots you gonna get. Uh, you know, you're not gonna do 10 combo moves or, you know, like you just gotta know because college is about systems. So as you can see, like it's guys that are great college players, but they won't be great NBA players. Then it's dudes that are NBA players, but they're not the best college guys. And then, so, you know, college is a little different. Like, you want to ask, like, I try to tell people, I always ask your coach what you're going to work on. Or I try to talk to the coach in the summertime or whoever, you know, you know, if you go to, like, Georgia, Auburn, Georgia, Alabama, uh, North Carolina, anybody, if I could talk to a coach and say, hey, what, he's gonna, what is he going to do this year? And then, you know, some of them say, hey, I'll send you some film over so I can show you what he's going to do so you can get prepared for that. Cause you don't want to have them doing something they're not gonna do, and then in high school, you know, I just feel high sc- high school and middle school. I think you should just continue to work on everything, cause you know certain high schools, like when you're the best player, they're gonna let you play. Yeah, and but a lot of kids just go straight into what scoring. I'm just gonna score, 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 score. They don't work on passing. They don't work on defense. They don't work on nothing else. Just score, 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 score. So. I think each level is different. So each player, each level is different. So you have to devise a plan for each one. Yeah, it goes back to what you were saying, though, watching the film and understanding what's needed for each player, breaking down their game, what they need to work on. When you have some of these these clients, um, like you mentioned J.D. Davidson, right? And I know he had to spend some time in the G League. What's your thoughts on the G League, because I hear different viewpoints from people that's played in it, people that train. They say it doesn't really help in development. Some say it does. What's your thoughts on the G League in regards of developing players? Hmm. Um. I think I think it's good because, um, like a lot of these guys don't get to play a lot of them not gonna get to play in the league so like like you say for instance like i had you know jd's played in the g league ashton played in the g league um reggie Perry's played in g league uh jared rowan and played in g league key on the play in the g like a lot of dudes like recently like that i know played in the g league but the biggest thing is like just trying to get them run like you you just don't want guys sitting on the bench and not doing anything so i think it's good from a standpoint of the development like just getting like just getting jd as an example you know he was able to show he could score a little more average of 21.5 energy you know he led you know one of the top leaders in assists. um like 
you know, it you want to get these guys run because you don't want them to just sit on the bench not doing anything. So you're still teaching them, you know, whatever G League team you with, you're still teaching them the offense. You're still teaching them um, the aspects of what the Celtics do because Celtics, I mean, he's on a team that just won the NBA championship. You got Drew Holiday and you got Peyton Pritchard. So, um, you know, that's good for him to go down and do what he needs to do. And it's just like other two-way guys. You know, I feel like it's good. And then it helps other guys that, you know, might not have an opportunity. You know, they might go to the G and play well and get an opportunity to call up. I just think a lot of times people get the wrong misconception. Like players sometimes, if I average 25 or 30, I'm going to the league. And, like, a lot of teams look at guys for roles. You know, they'll, they'll take a guy that's average seven point, but he leads the league. He leads the G League in steals. They were like, we can put him out there. So, um, sometimes the basketball is bad, I will say. Um, like, a lot of defense. Like, like if you watch the scores, they be so high sometimes. So, I, I think it – but, I mean, that's like the lead to me too. Like, you can't just say the G League is bad. Sometimes league games be bad. But you see, when you get to the playoffs, it's like, oh, that ain't turned them lights on. But it, I mean, certain regular season game, like it's hard to get up for eighty-two games. Like it's just hard. Like, like it's just like telling us, hey man, we are gonna hoop at the gym for, um, we are gonna work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday we off, but then Thursday, Friday, Saturday we playing. Like that's a lot. So it's kind of hard. So I don't. I think it's good. In some in some instinct, but I think overall it's good because it keeps the guy. Like I guarantee you, just in this draft alone, a lot of the first round picks you see are gonna be in the G League. Cause some teams are not gonna need them. Like, why would you throw a guy out? Cause each level is different. And some of these players will tell you, like, it's not the same. Like, ball is ball, but then you're playing against the best players in the world. Like, you can watch the G League, you'll see a guy score 30. 40. He gets to the league game, he might score four or five points. And you're like, dog, but he was killing in the G. It's different. You know, it's just it's just different levels. But I think it's good because it gives you it gives you a way to develop them. Cause you can see the jumps. Like once they get comfortable, it's different. Like you just don't want to throw them to the fire. Sometimes, so I, I I get it and I like it. I like it, and I mean, sometimes I go to the game like this is terrible, this is boring. And then sometimes you go, it's good, just like NBA games. So I th- I think it's it's give or take. Yeah, it got some good, it got some negative, just like anything uh, with the G League when it comes to that. And I think it's still valuable, even like with the Celtics, they had a couple of calls up, uh, for example, because it's a long season, like you said. So. At any point, you still are being a factor and helping in that team because it might be a game where, especially you talking about like Lakers, for example, Bron not playing all eighty-two. He might he might need somebody from the G League coming up around game forty-four, and you play well, you might stay up, called up, you might just you go down, but it's still a part of being a part of the league. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little bit little bit better in regards of having your avenue to the league than being overseas. You're not getting called up at any point. I, mean, I, I think it's different, though, because like, uh-huh. you got to look at it. Some guys, like if you're not on a two-way, you could play well in the G, and then you could be on a certain team, and another NBA team can call you up. You could get a 10-day. You could get – so it mm-hmm. gives guys the incentive to play well. Like the two-way guys, they going to be up with the team. But the guys that ain't on a two-way, they'll be able to say, if I'm with, just say I'm with the Motor City Crews, right? That's the Detroit affiliate. And the Miami Heat see me play, and they like what I do. The Miami Heat can call me out the G and bring me on the team. So it gives everybody an opportunity. And then even with overseas, it depends on what league you play in. Like if you're in a Euro Cup, if you kill, because like people don't understand, like the NBA always sends scouts out there. Mm. So that's why I try to tell guys like everybody just think okay if I get to if I don't go to the league I'm just gonna play in the G League like you can go overseas and kill and then call you right back 
like a lot of dudes that did it, like Mike James back in the day, like uh Patrick Beverly. Yeah. PJ Tuck. PJ Tuck. I love everybody you just mentioned. Mike James. So, so like I think he should have been in the league still. It's a lot of people. And I ain't even talking about the Mike James you talking about. You talking about the light skin and Mike James. They you talking about the Mike, you talking about the Mike James uh ball head, right? Yeah, they used to play back in the day. With yeah, the, yeah, I know. I Dallas know Mavericks and yeah, that's what people don't know. A lot of them people played overseas and came back because they called them back and they seen them. Like, what's the purpose of you? I mean, the number, like even just the money, the financial. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of man, it's a lot of guys in the G, bro. Like I'm telling, you, and they could play in the league. It's just by opportunity. But sometimes they turn down a whole lot of money just to stay over here, and I get it. Like people just say, man, why they just want to go play for money? Some people just don't want to go over there. <laughs> it's not easy. You're away from your family for like 10, 12, 10 months in a whole different country. And you just want, you know, you just don't know. Everybody's not built to go overseas. It's just not. But it's still a great avenue if you want to make money and you want to, you know, like a basket. Like if you just, I don't know if you've seen like some of the reels and things that they have. Like when they be having games, they be outside. People be having like the, you know, just just watching that. For, it's like, big. It's big. It's different. So, I mean, some people just don't like it, and some people do. But I I get it. So, I just feel like the G gives people incentive to play well because you get called up at any time. So, you know, some people dreams are gonna get met. Some people not. So it just depends. You know. Yeah, I've had on one of my teammates from high schools overseas. Had on Pierre Jackson, and he he was telling me and explaining like overseas life is is really like you said every level is different. It's different being over there, not you being like Pierre Jackson. Said. Yeah, Pierre Jackson. Yeah. That was your high school teammate. Oh no 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 no! I said my high school teammate is overseas, and I've had on Pierre Jackson. Oh, okay okay okay. I thought I seen him on the podcast. Like that dude was a monster. Like I'm being honest, people like him. You telling me he couldn't play in the league? Come on, man. It's just it's just opportunity. That's what he he shared that with us. Like it really is just the opportunity and getting it. And he said his situation was he was injured when he was over in Philly when they was doing the, the process. Mm -hmm. TJ McConnell, that's that basically who had his spot, and he, but he was injured at the time. So it was like mm -hmm. it, the it, like it's, it's ebbs and flow, like you get hurt at the wrong. Wrong time, and somebody take look at TJ McConnell. Now he about to get a big deal because I had to play. I mean, and he ain't doing nothing out the order. He come off the bench, he does what he supposed to do, and he go sit down, and he's gonna make millions of dollars for that. So, I mean, it's just, it's just like it's so many dudes I know they can play in the league. Like right now, it's just the opportunity. And once the league done with you, it's done with you. Like it's yeah. hard. Like, I don't think John Wall would ever get another chance. And he's been he's been in the media the past couple of times asking, like, bro, I don't care. I'll be you. He said he'll be you done as hassle. You know what I'm saying? Like that. he just want he just want to put the jersey back on. Because like you telling the guy like he was one of the best to play in the league. And now, you know, you just don't like that. That's a different type of life. It just is. So I I can understand why you want to do it. But once the league, like DeMarcus could, do I think he could have still played in the league? Yup. Do I think Dwight Howard could have still played in the league? Yup. They could have helped somebody's team. It's just like sometime when the league done, it's kind of like football. T.O. could have still been playing. But like when the league is done with you, it's done it's, with you. It's curtains. Curtains. You can Ain't There's nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. You could go overseas once it, you get to that it, certain it, level. It, it, so, like, come on, man. It's a lot of people. Like you said, if the league is done, the league is done because you could go overseas. Boogie been balling overseas. Dwight's been balling overseas. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. That is, hey, good job, but you're not coming back here. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's tough and difficult sometimes for to accept, I can only imagine, like, you've been in the league and you you know you got the talent. You just can't get it. You just don't get that opportunity no more. 
I don't know. I know that hurt. Got to. Big time. For you, being in this industry, the sports industry in general, and you shared how, you know, it started with one player and then it just, the floodgates opened from there. How big is networking and relationships in this industry for you? The biggest thing in the world. <laughs> I mean, that might be, hey, listen, you can have hard work. You can you can be the first one in the gym, the second, last one out. You can do all of that. But if you don't have the correct network and the correct relationships and God, because I'm not going to leave him out, you won't make it. Like, I remember I didn't know anybody. Like, just everything that I've gotten is from a relationship. A person introduced to me or, you know, God put that person in my path where I was introduced to this person. And then they was able to introduce me to this person. Like, networking, like, I, I try to tell trainers, too, young trainers, like, they asked me what was one of the biggest things, like, if I had to give them some advice. I always tell people, I always learn how to serve first. Mm. I think too many times, just in our community, like, I think we always want to be the head honcho. Like, I got, nah, like, you know. And then sometimes, and I know this might sound crazy, you can't always think you're going to get paid to do something. Mm. Like it, nice. sometimes, man, you might not get paid nothing. It's just about the opportunity. Like, I just give you a good example. Um, just so guys can kind of understand where I'm coming from. I knew at a certain time I wanted to deal with the higher level athlete, the NBA, the top college guys. Um, I didn't want to stay on the level of the kid level, right? So I was like, what is the best way for me to do this? Um, Rob, you son. Uh, so I plugged you. So I'm going to say I ain't doing that for you. Illinois, Chicago. He was the coach at UAB at the time, University of Birmingham, Alabama, Birmingham. So um, I was like, man, how am I going to, you know, I want to understand because I knew I had guys that was at a high level. So I used to hear about things like pre-draft workouts and uh -huh. You know, because everybody will tell you, NBA trainer. Like, NBA, I used to always wonder, what did that mean? Like, okay, so what am I not doing that this dude say he's an NBA trainer doing, right? So I was like, okay, so how am I going to get into it? So he introduced me to a guy by the name of Joe Smith um, at Wasserman, who's over the director of basketball operations at Wasserman. Um, mm -hmm. We're from – I'm from Alabama. Like I said, I'm from Selma. He's from Birmingham. Met him, and at the time, like I didn't know like the big the agency thing, so that's when I started to find out CAA is a big agency, Wasserman is a big agency, Excel, Priority, like started learning the agency stuff. So mm -hmm. I was asked him. He was like, "Yeah, we do pre draft every year. We had all these NBA players out here, uh, and we have a guy by the name of I don't know if you know him, Olin Simplis, okay, uh, our whisper, right." So he was like, hey, um, we do our stuff in L.A. So I was just like, yo, you mind if I come out there? Like, just come, you know, help, rebound, pass. I'll do whatever. He was like, cool. On my own dime, flew out there, stayed out there from my own hotel each and every day. And I got to be in the gym. I got to see Olin work. I got to be around, like, Shea Gilgis. Kill Alexander Walker. Um, I got to see uh, Isaiah Harris, Harris that plays for the Knicks. Um, like, and I told when I seen Shea Gilgis then, he was like, I was like, bro, he gonna be a couple years. He might be better playing the league. So, you know, just being around that, Olin being like the, one of my OGs, and let me, you know, jump in, do the certain things, and. You know, just, you know, and then the nation I came out, they had Evan Mobley, Jalen Suggs for their pre draft, Trenton Walford, David Dukes, like different guys, and Isaiah Mobley, like just being there and watching the pre draft, helping, like, didn't get paid for it. Just, 
you know, just went just to be around and meet people. And, and then, you know, I was able to meet other agents, other agencies like GMs. And like, I, even when I was doing things with, with Ashton at the time, that's when I kind of got, when, cause when you have a kid that's being so highly recruited, you know, you meeting the likes of Calipari's and the, you know, Bruce Pearls, the, I mean, you know, now, you know, the Coach K's at the time. And like you meet all these top Jerome Tang, that's the head coach at Kansas State. He was at Baylor at the time. Like uh Joel Justice, he's at Ohio State, he was at Kentucky at the time. Just meeting all these guys and every time they would come watch me work out, like Buzz Williams at Texas and I would get their numbers. Because they was just like, hey, you know, you'll probably have somebody else down the line, which I did. And then I started getting in tune with that and then the agents. And then then that's when I started to meet, like, GMs, assistant GMs and scouts. And, and you know, like, if you want to get in the business, like, you're going to have to have people that's in the know to help you, like, to vouch for you. So each and every moment, you know, I'm always trying to meet people and learn, meet people and trying to exchange information and trying to, you know, to get to where I actually want to go. So I try to tell people, like, you got to serve before you can lead. I pay my dues. Like, I rebounded. I listen. Even now, like, if I know what I want to do. So if that entails me and where I'm at now, and they say, hey, if you want this job, you got to do this. Okay, cool. It is what it is. Like, I can put my pride to the side. Even if I know more than what somebody teaching, like, yeah, I still listen. Put my pride to the side. I'm going to listen. So, I just think, I just, that's the biggest thing in this basketball world. Even just in life, who you know, who you can call, who you can, who you can get on the phone, like, who you can talk to, who you can get them to talk to, who do they know? So that's another thing. I always treat people right because you don't know. You don't know who that person knows. And they could be like, hey, I call this person and drop a hat for you. And then they say, oh, no, I don't like that dude. That dude, he don't even know. So, you know, even in, like, you could be at a restaurant, how you act, how you act around people. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know what's going on. Like, you just got to be careful. So um, that that relationship part is very big. Yeah, that's gonna probably be the the title of the episode. You gotta serve before you lead. That that that'll be because <laughs> that that's facts. And it's funny, me and my my crew, we always talk about it. Like I look at a lot of players, coaches, etc. When certain things happen, and I'm like, hey, this just shows it don't matter nothing about the X's and O's. How you treat people goes way farther. And any of that on the basketball court, the football field, none of that matter. You could be a smart, never be the smartest dude in the room. You could think you know everything. You could be the biggest a hole in the world, and they will say no. But you can be the most humblest person, not know nothing, and people be like, you know, I'm a rock with that person. Like I'll be honest, and this is no slight. Like I'm, I love all races. I love all people, right? But that's the thing that, like. The young white guys, they turn, they go be managers for colleges. They go be volunteer assistants at places and don't get paid a dime. And they work their way up. And guess what? They're working in the NBA. They working like they doing your interviews when you come to interview. Cause they been through the rigors. Like a lot of these guys, they managers, they cleaning up, they cleaning shorts, they cleaning tops. They going to get the coaches coffee. They doing this and they doing that. Uh, I learned the, I learned like, bro, I learned, I'm not going to name school or whatever. I worked at camp, right? They have dudes that come in from different places that want to be managers at the school, but they come to work camp just to show them how good they are. And guess what? That coaching staff is watching them. Are they on time? Are they attentive? How do they do? Like, how do they do what they supposed to do? And they be like, yo, when it comes time for him to be a manager, we'll hire him to be a manager. Like, they do the stuff we don't want to do. Like, sometimes we like, bro, if I ain't getting paid, I ain't going. 
<laughs> that shit's it. Like, I'm not going there, bro. No, I'm not. I didn't, bro, I, I didn't got paid, not got paid a dime for a workout. But I knew where it was going to take me. That's having the bigger picture in mind. Yeah, and just, like you, again, I, like you I, said. I have to get paid. Listen, I have two daughters. I know. Like, now, I ain't with that. Like, no. <laughs> you got to play, bro. Now, it just depends on what it is. But, if like, if it's an opportunity and I got to go to a team and they say, yo, um, we need you here. Can you fly out here? I pay for it. I don't care. I'll come. I might not get paid, but I know it's an opportunity. You know, but like it's it's I don't think people understand, man. Like it's these guys do what we won't do. It's kind of like I, I say this, bro. It's just like the Hispanic community. Like they work hard, bro. Like y'all, y'all people can laugh and say they stay in the same house. They use a lot of them in the car. Man, listen, they they work hard. And I just think sometimes we have to instill that as, as an African-American community. Our guys like, listen, bro, sometimes you're not going to get paid. And you got to be fine with it. Now, I'm not saying be fine with it all the time, but just yeah. know if it's going to take us somewhere, then – and then guess what? It's going to be a revolving door. So anybody like, man, I'm grateful. Like, dudes, intern for me. And like I try to help him on the drop of a hat. All of them can tell you. I don't mind them working my working the players out, doing whatever they need to, putting it on film so it helped them get more clients. I'm cool with that because I want to help them because somebody helped me. So I won't go to a high level and take people with me, but you only gonna take people that's humble and willing to work. So I literally sat on threads this week because a couple people hopped on a live we had for another episode. And I was like, I think what tends to happen, not even in our community, but in as a whole and maybe my generation, mm -hmm. is the mentality of like somebody owes you something. Mm -hmm. No, I'm appreciative for every, mm -hmm. every single person that likes something, every single person that comments, because mm -hmm. they don't have to do that. They don't have, like you responding in the DM, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Respond. I send hundreds of DMs out mm -hmm. dang near every day. And some people just don't even look at it. I'm extremely appreciative if anybody looks at it, responds. I, like you said, I view it as an opportunity. I mm -hmm. will literally email, DM the athlete that has 800 followers to the athlete with 6 million. It's all an opportunity at the end of the day. And guess what? You doing it and you got faith that somebody going to answer because you just never know. Got to keep it. shooting. Like you got to keep shooting. You don't know if it's going to hit or not. Like, I'm listen, man, man you just don't know. Like, you just got to keep shooting. And eventually, one of them going to go in, unless you just the most worst shooter in the world. Like, I don't think nobody that bad. Well, they just can't hit one shot. So, I'm gonna hit one of them. I, I can bet you that one. I was telling I was telling my wife, I was sending DMs today while we was on a walk. And I'm like, tonight, that's one of my shots that went in. So she already know, like she she knew this was a special one tonight. I was like, this is one of the shots that went in for sure. Uh -huh. What's the ultimate goal for you? I know you've mentioned it, I've heard it on other episodes and podcasts, but share it with some of our listener followers the ultimate goal that you're striving for. Uh, to be on the NBA staff as an assistant coach, um, you know, being the head of player head player development guy of an NBA team, that's what it is. Um, you know, I don't, I won't be, I, I'm gonna be honest when I say this. Like, I won't show them a blessing if it's a power five, but I want to ultimately, like, I want to coach. I don't want to, you know, I. I give you the route I want to take. I like the feel handy route. That's that's me. Like I and listen, I love Drew Halen. Like I I do. I love like all those guys that got like they own, they built their brand, they got all these players and you know, they train them and different things. I'm cool with that, but I just 
I'm more of a structured person. Mm. I function better. Cause it's like when you're an entrepreneur and you're doing things, like people don't understand like basketball training. And some trainers won't tell you this, but sometimes we deal with a lot. You just don't know. You might have somebody say they coming to a workout at this time and don't show up. Or they might be 40 minutes late. Now you got to kind of maneuver. You got another like another session coming 10 minutes after that. So now you got to tell these people, hey, can you hold on for a second to I do this? Or, you know, um, somebody gets hurt, can't, can't work them out now. Uh, you know, they might go to another trainer. You don't know. Like, it's just so much, especially, you know, high school. And then sometimes you might not get paid. You know, I have people that owe me money now. Like, it's just like, it's just so much. Like, it's so much that you have to deal with. Like, that's unstructured. Like, you deal with some professional people, and you deal with some people that are not professional. You deal with some parents that are professional. You deal with some, <laughs> you deal with. Like it's so much you have to deal with. And then as you get older and older, guys get better and better. Like, you know, they'll tell you, hey, you don't have to train with him no more. You can go train. Like, I, I get that from, you know, even like I try to talk. So guys that do pre-drive with me, I try to talk to their trainers, just let them know, listen, I'm not taking credit for you guys. Like, I'm here to help them. But, you know, you can come down, do whatever you need to do. Like, I, I'm not one of those guys. Like, but I know – you have been working the guy all your all his life, got him to that pinnacle, and then they leave you. All because of a name, all because of something. And then it's when money get involved, agents get involved, people. I tell people this all the time. Is loyalty is very rare in this game. I give you a good example. Anthony Edwards is probably one of the most loyalist people I've ever met mm. ever the same dudes that was with him like justin holland he's a business manager that was his train like his cameraman who's like my brother trey uh done trey mccain like his best friends his brothers all his people everybody else around he took them along with him and they still with him to this day most loyal, like I'm talking about loyal to the soil. Like, I mean loyal, like to era. But that's that's like only one yeah. percent. I've seen guys that people didn't like took them on rides, like just like basically raised them and they leave them high and dry. Only thing they can get is a ticket to the game. And I'm not saying people look for that, but I try to tell some because some trying to be like, man, I just want to have my own player, get him to the NBA, and then I be with him all the time and I train him all the time, bro. That I always like that, man. Let me let me tell you something. Agencies send their guys to certain people, right? And then a lot of these guys are cheap. They don't. Why do they have to pay you? They really don't. They at the pinnacle where they don't have to pay you. They can go to their NBA facility and work out for free. Like it's, it's just so much stuff people don't know. And then now, you know, back then when we was in college, we ain't had no money. Now these kids got money, you know. But still, they can work out with GAs at school. They can work out with the player development guy at school. Like it's just so many things that you don't know about basketball, like just the training business. But at the same time, I enjoy just being able to connect with players off the court. Like, because a lot of people think it's about basketball training. It's about the relationship. Like, it's guys, and I'm just like, we can talk, like, all the time. Like, it, it's more to me than just the basketball, just the financial part of it. It's about, like, the, the best thing I ever done was – Certain guys that I train, they ain't making it nowhere in the pros. Guess what? They got families now. My first client, Ricky Sherman, he has two kids now. And he works at a company. He got a wife. Like, just to see him. Like, that's more important than, 
I mean, yeah, I love when my guys go to the league. That's that's an accomplishment in itself. But just see somebody that didn't do that and say the basketball changed their life for showing them how to work hard, showing them how to do certain things. So it's that's my goal because I love structure. Like, I'm cool with it. We got meetings at 6 o'clock. You got to work this person out this time. You got this, this, this. We got film at this time. We got this at this time. We got this. I'm cool with it because I know, okay, bop, 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 bop. This is what I got. Instead of having to say, well, he may show up today. He might not. That's funny that you said that because my co-host that's supposed to hop on, we literally was talking about that. And he coaches himself at a high school and just like with the aspect of the training aspect in the summertime he trains players too and he literally was telling me he said yo i was supposed to do something today person ain't show up this person ain't come through this person oh they all in the chat yeah i'm trying to get working i'm gonna be there tomorrow then it's only two people i mean i'm sure you just said i'm gonna have seven people today and one person show up and you'd be like bro i could have stayed at home for this I'm just being honest. Like, people don't tell the real stuff. Like, it's cool. Like, you got to, like, a lot. Like, people don't understand. Like, a lot of those guys, like, the, the C. Bricks, the Drew Halen and stuff, the, like, just, you know, like, like Olin. Olin works for uh works for Wasserman. So, Wasserman bring their guys to him. Like, mm -hmm. don't everybody have it. Like, CAA got their own trainer they got guys work with. Excel got their own. They go to Miami Hoop School. Like, it's just, ex, you know, like, uh, uh, what is it? Rock Nation. They use somebody. Like, it's even my partner, he used me. Like, it's, and I got other agents just use me. It's different. Like, everybody has guys they want their guys to go to. So, it's, and, like, a lot of that is not, it's just relationships and God then put them in certain positions. So, what they got for them is for them. What I got for me is for me. So I try to stay out of I'm better than you or whatever. I don't care about that. Like what you what for you is for you. What for me is for me. So that's all I can worry about. But it's it's not easy how people think it is. And then now the game has changed so much. It's a train on every corner now. And it's not hard to train now. It really is not. Because all you can do is go on YouTube and find a couple of drills and say you're a trainer. I just being honest. You're not wrong. You not. <laughs> being honest. You, you're not wrong. Um, I've seen it all, man. Like, I've seen it all. With having this experience, before we transition to end off the show, the fourth quarter segment, which is kind of some fun questions. The last one we have for you is with all this experience that you have um, and everything that you just mentioned with the behind the scenes that people do not know about that life and what you do what keeps you motivated what keeps you going mm. my kids and just getting to that goal i'm a goal so if i say i'm gonna do something i'm gonna do it um but my kids keep me going because i mean i know we say listen i love the game not not even just that man just being able to be a difference in somebody's life like you just don't know like it's like people just they see these basketball players for just athletes they don't see them as people you know they don't know what they're going through outside of basketball so being able being able to be a a beacon for life like just show people like hey like my story can help somebody else out you know like I can, you know, even for my daughters, just trying to teach them like hard work gonna get you somewhere. You know, mean people gonna get you somewhere. Like, yeah, I wanna be financially, like way financially stable so they can do whatever they wanna do. So they can have stuff for their kids, kids. Like just just be able to do certain things, but just keep, you know, and my mom, you know, she passed 14 years ago and just just, you know, building on her legacy, like her and my you know my dad's still living but just just building on a legacy man just just trying to make it the way i'm trying to go and just just trying to be a beacon so the next person can know like don't give up um that's another thing they don't know it, it's been plenty of times i've been like bro i'm i don't want to do this no more like 
Like you see the glitz and glamour, you see the videos, you see the people I work with, you see, you know, you don't understand the sleepless nights, the all day, all night. You don't understand, like people don't understand you had your own life. Like, hey, mm-hmm. I can't make it to a workout today because I don't feel good. What you mean can't make it to a workout? You know, my son need to get some training in today. I don't care what you want me to die. You know, so like it's it's just a lot of listen, man. Nobody, you know, everybody just think we just robots. Sometimes I feel like vacation is hard to go on vacation, especially during the summertime. You know, just trying to have like, you know, sometimes you're with your family, sometimes you're not. So trying to make a balance between that. Like this game is like it's it's a lot to it, but it's what I love. Like, I don't want to punch in a clock, like tight, you know, you know, looking for being doing taxes and, you know, looking, crunching numbers, like, you know, and some people like that. Cause that's what they love to do. And that is nothing wrong with that, but I want to basketball is fun to me. So um, just, you know, just, just trying to be a beacon for, for the for the one for the underdogs and um just trying to show them that if you keep going you'll make it hey on this show we like to speak things into existence so we are on the same page with you we are in agreement you will be on an nba coaching staff and when it happens we'll gladly have you back on be like we we said it here first we said it here first you believe it i give it two years time we on board with you we in agreement <laughs> we on the same page two years tops but um i said here first i don't know when you're gonna drop this episode but um uh, i am about to take an opportunity um <laughs> so uh it's gonna be the start of it um i'm just blessed to be in a position to it's it's time um you know i've been doing it for 15 years in atlanta it's been, you know, it's, you know, I listen, man, Atlanta, my second home. So, you know, it's time for me to spread my wings and do what I need to do. But um, eventually it's going to come out what I'm going to do. So, um, but I just wanted to, you know, so I'll be in the league very soon. I ain't worried about it. And I just, like I said, I speak it because they say your words matter. Like your words bring power, mm-hmm. you know, I don't speak negative, so I know it's gonna happen. So, and I would gladly be the first person to come back on your show to say, "Hey, we said it." So, nah, I, I appreciate that though. Of course, we'll be locked in to see what this opportunity is. Of course, mm-hmm. fourth quarter segment. We love food on this show. Well, love eating it, talking about it. First question: We gotta always ask a food-related question. So, I guess one uh, meal you could eat and never get tired of. Oh man. Uh a kava bowl. Um uh what's it called? Harissa chicken, spinach, rice. I don't care if it's brown or white. The harissa, pickle onions, corn, uh, tomatoes, and cabbage. Good. I can eat that every day. I ain't even gonna lie. When cop went, and I gotta give a shout out to Jared Roten. He's with the Detroit Pistons. I did his pre-draft and he put me on cobbles. And I was like, bro, he ate it every day. I was like, bro, it can't be that good. He said, Rob, trust me. I'm gonna buy you a bowl. And he bought it, it was straight. But then I was like, let me go there myself and try something. I could eat it every day. Yo. I just brought my wife over there like two weeks ago. I she was it. like, oh my goodness. This is, I said, yeah. I eat it every day. Swear. Every day. I eat seven days a week. No problem. Literally, after that time we had, it was like two days later. I was like, babe, which one get to eat tonight? Can we go get Kava? I said. And one more thing. That and some watermelon. I'm good. <laughs> I can dig it. All right. So being from Alabama, mm-hmm. top five NBA players from Alabama. NBA players or just players in general? Hey, you give me whatever list you want to give me. Uh, NBA players. I can top five best players. Okay. 
thing that I saw. Okay, so I don't okay. know about in Bama. Listen, do not listen. I I'm not on this. Listen, uh, I can give you Georgia too because I'm in long enough. But the top okay. five best players from Bama, not. And I definitely want to include myself. I was good, but I went. Doc Robinson was one of them. I wouldn't say, and he's my cousin. I'm not going to put him in order. Doc Robinson. Uh, J.D. Davidson. Uh, Jerry Wallace. Uh, ooh, we. Who else came from Bama? Uh, she, 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 she. Dang, man, that's that's ooh. Oh man, I know I'm gonna miss somebody. Uh, <laughs> Water Zulu. Who am I missing? Oh man, I love the Gerald Wallace pick too. People, people be forgetting about Gerald Wallace. Yeah, Gerald Wallace. Um. In that echelon, man. It, it been some. I say guy named Brian Williams. Uh, sweet play that Joe Davis. He was one of the good ones. And oh, dang, Charles Barkley. I forget Barkley. Uh, and Barkley. I just go with them right now. But okay. I, like Marvin Stone was good. Uh, it it was a lot of dudes, man. That was good. Like uh, um, guy from Mobile. I can't. He played at NC State. I can't think of his name right now. He was good. It, it's a lot of them though. Okay. Top two. Like I I can give you a top ten next time. I'm okay. just I'm like, but George, I can definitely like give you. I can definitely right. give you George. Hey, so give give me Georgia. Uh, Lou Will, Anthony Elwood, uh, Lou Will, Anthony Elwood. Oh, man, I think you got to put Jalen Brown in there now. Um, I'm biased. I think one person that don't get enough credit is Ashton. I'm just biased. Uh, uh, who I'm missing? Oh, dang, man. Atlanta had so many dudes. Like, I'm just talking about from the time that when I that I got who oh. Josh, who Josh, Dwight Howard, Javaris Crendon was good. Uh, oh, Javaris was Javaris, so tough. Um, people forget him, Malcolm Broad, and um, Sharif Cooper. Uh, Sharif, he overseas now, right? Nah, yeah, he went to um, what you call, but yeah, China. Him, I think. Um, uh, Jordan, not Jordan, Car- uh, what's his name? Dang, he played at Tennessee. Jordan, oh, dang it. Oh, uh, what's his name? He played at Tennessee, he played in the league. Um, bro, I forgot dude name. I, Jordan, it ain't Jordan Crawford, is it? He in the league right now. He, in the league. he even scored fifty some in the league. Um, my my partner, uh, key to training, training. I forgot he from down at South George, but he was fire. Uh, dang it, bro. He used to play. He played he played at Tennessee. He played at Tennessee. Um, he played for the Jordan, Cavs. Jordan McCray. Jordan. Oh my gosh, Jordan McCray. Jordan McCray. Um, he was a bucket. Yeah, he was burger. Mike Mercer played with Lou Will was a bucket. Uh yeah, Josh Smith. Oh, Josh Smith. Um oh we bro. It, it is so much. Like, shoot, we can go now. Like, I've seen Stefan Castle grow up. I just seen like it's Stefan went to Newton High School. Well, he went to Newton. So, <laughs> Stefan was like in the seventh grade. Like, it's a picture of me, him, and Ashton. He took a picture with us, and he my size. And he was the fourth pick in the draft last night. Like, it's it's insane. Like, just to see Colin Six. Oh, forgot Colin. Colin was a phenomenon. Like when he did the Young Bull stuff. So, 
it's it's a lot of dudes in Georgia, man, that I was able to bless to see. And I know some I'm forgetting, but it was a lot of dudes I was blessed to see and play against. So yeah, that, it's a long, long, long list with that. Who are your five? You got you got the shirt on, so I, I would be remiss if not asking. Who's your five favorite players that you see in the W this year? Yeah, this year, right now, your five favorite players. Of course, uh, I I train Diamond the Shield, so that's my partner. But I mean, she's still trying to get back in the groove. Like she like she worked hard this summer to get back. Like she yeah, early in this season, she couldn't even walk. People don't even know that. So just to see her getting bad, playing with the with the sky. But I won't put her in there, but that's my dog to give her a shout out. But um of course Caitlin. I think I think the media is doing this, bro. Like, like she's not being disrespectful. She's not doing any of that stuff. I think it's more so the media. But I love watching Caitlin. I like Arike. Uh I'm biased because I like guards like Kelsey Plum, uh, you know, Asia Wilson. Uh, who? Uh, what's the old girl? Kalea Cooper. Uh, I like McLeod. I like McLeod. Uh, I don't think old girl got a fair shot, though. The Deja Fair girl from Syracuse. I was drafted by the Aces, yeah. I don't think she got a fair shot. Um, but it took Diamond to like really show, like tell me how the the, the W was, like because they only had like a certain amount of picks in the first round, and none of those picks are guaranteed to even be on the team. No, and they keep their veterans, like they keep them, like it, it don't matter, like they don't cut their veterans. So, um. I like Angel. I like, uh, you know, I just like just the new energy, like women's basketball. So it's good for me because my daughter, my little girl, loves it. So just watching the end, and then now you pay attention to like the kids that coming up. So it's, I mean, basketball in a good spot right now. You know, I just, I just wish they would stop trying to make. And I know people get mad at Caitlin, but it's not her, like. Like, I don't think she said something not being on the USA team. Like, they just made it like, oh, she should have. And then you making other people. You know, women way more emotional than us. So, nigga tell, like, they'll get pissed in a minute. So, uh, I just – I enjoy that, man, and just watching basketball in general. Like, NBA, you know, my favorite players in the league. So, it's, it's everything. Like, I just enjoy basketball. If you had to make a prediction, who you think is going to win the title this year? And what? W. <sighs> until otherwise, I say the Aces. <laughs> like, until I don't care how bad they're playing right now. Until, until shown otherwise, I just don't. I, I don't see it. Like, I don't see nobody else beating them. Yeah, I think what was it they won tonight, three game winning streak. Chelsea Gray's back. <laughs> that was the main thing. Chelsea yeah, wasn't able to get last season. Either. Like they just they way, way different. So I mean, I'm I'm just I'm just looking forward to this. I'm looking, I seen the draft today. I wasn't the biggest fan of this draft, honestly, but um, you know, ready for summer league in two weeks. I'll be in Vegas. So ready to see some of my players that that picked up, that got on teams tonight. Um, just you know, ready to see Bronny. Um, and I'm not mad about that at all. Like that, just to see the picture with him and his son when he was holding him, and now he's in the NBA on the same team. I don't care what nobody say. People do it all the time. It's in business. And in sports, people get the benefit of the doubt. It's coaches in this profession that they sons on coaching staffs and have no credentials. So please shut up. They do it in the business world too. How many CEOs put their sons in a certain position? 
who cares? I don't care if he knew he was going to the Lakers. I don't care if he did. The only thing that was funny to me was they showed him watching the TV and he cried. I'm like, bro, come on now. You all, all us knew you was going. Like, come on, bro. We've been knowing this since you entered the, the enter, since we got the number of the order. Am I lying? Am I lying? Nah, we knew it was going there. Where he was going. Like, I don't even think I would have cried. It's just like, okay. I don't even know if I would have watched the draft. I've been like, I'm just keeping it but Like, he's emotional. I'm like, bro, like, I don't, this is certain stuff I just don't get. Like, I, I, listen, it's dope. I'm cool with it. I just was like, come on. Like, nah, it's- yeah. Cause Rick, Rich Paul, he, he pulled the strings. He said he only talking to two teams. He only worked out for two teams. So guess what? He's either was going to go 55 or he was going to go 56. Like, it was funny how they, like, showed the green room today. I was like, bro, they only made us watch this because Brandon was on it. So they were going to see how many viewers they got. That's all they was going to do. Because now I was like, some league ain't going to be that lit. It is because he going to be on the Lakers. So guess what? It's going to be hard because one of my players got picked up by the Lakers tonight. So, like, it's going to be hard getting in the games. People are going to want to see Bernie. Like, he's going to have a microscope. And the only problem I had, now, I get it, but Rich was like, listen, bro, if y'all draft him, he's going to go to Australia. Like, I'm tripping. I'm like, bro, you is sick for that. Like, come on, dog. Like, but we all, like, they act like they didn't know on ESPN today that Bernie was going 55. And then Woe was just saying, yeah, man, they've been waiting all day to pick Bernie. And then they showed the, the green room today. I mean, they room calling him. I'm like, Man, if y'all don't stop this, like, we already knew this was going to happen. Like, come on. Like, come on. Did you not know that? I knew it was happening. You knew it was going to happen. We had to watch fit. And then the problem that made me laugh was they still had – he went 55, right? It was still yeah. three more picks, and they ain't even talked about the last three. I'm like, not going to bring them up. Once he got picked, I turned the T, I turned it off. I had it on in the background, just like you said, just like, to see. All right, like, Bron I mean, getting picked. It's like, I mean, it, it, it just was some of the stuff was just, you know, they now they got to talk about it. Man, he got the greatest attitude. Man, he's he he he's an NBA, he has NBA attributes. Like, you know, he's just so self. I'm like, bro, we don't need to hear all that. Just we knew what was finna happen. I'm not mad. Because guess what? People can tell you whatever they want to tell you. Do you have any kids? Do you have any kids? Oh, I have two. You have two kids. If you could put your kids in a certain position, would you Every do day. it? Would you, do it? would you even think about it? Not at all. You would, it, listen, and you can say it's privilege. I don't care. If I can put my daughters in, in a job that I know I don't care if they don't know how to do the job. If it's a if it's an area the way I can do it, I'm gonna do it. Woj said it best. He said, Woj, which I think was great hearing from Woj. Woj said, I want to hear nothing about nepotism because the whole league is full of that before it's Bronny even was born. It. It's full of it. How many bigger staffs do you see on staff? Yeah. Huh? Exactly. How yeah. many? The Bus family. The, 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 the Lakers got passed down to every child. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. And it's okay. going to continue. Huh? It's going to continue. continue. It's college coaches that got their kids on staff. Literally. And it's Literally. sporty. And it's, why it's, are you mad? Like you said, it's not, not even just a, a NBA thing. It's life in general. Like in general, it's dudes that pastors that had their kids as the the up and coming pastor. Like it's 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 store owners that had their kids that's gonna be the store owner when they gone. Yeah. Or the VP. Like, come on, what are we talking about? It's coaches that got their sons as associate head coach. They got their sons that are 
on staff, and it might be somebody that's remotely better than them. Who cares? I don't. So y'all can get mad at me all you want. If it's a chance for Hannah Allen or Jordan Allen to get something, and I got to go through it, and they say I can do it, you can bet your bottom dollar they're going to get that job. And I don't care if you get mad at me. I don't care. Hands down, every single day. my week. picture of me holding them together, and I'm going to do just what he had, legacy, exactly. I'm going to do the same thing. Facts, we're going to end off the show with this. Uh, one of the podcasts I heard you on, you said that you feel Larry Bird is one of the most disrespected regard the greats. Mm-hmm. How good was Larry Bird? Why do you feel he is disrespected? Bro, it's even crazy is when I really knew Bird. I'm I was born in 85. So by the time I kind of like knew Bird, he was like so on the 92 Dream team, you know, his back was messed up. He would come in and play a little bit. But I had to like, I saw some of it. Like, my daddy was a Celtic fan, so I was able to go. Like, it, it take like, this – I just think a lot of – it's this generation. It's just the most disrespectful generation ever, bro. Like, like you literally have players telling you that this man used to tell them what he was going to do, and he did it. Like, he was one of the best shooters. One of the best, like, he was, he's most disrespectful. Like, they don't bring his name up for real. Like, listen to what um, J.J. Reddick said. Like, come on. Like, what we have to understand is the game evolves. Everything evolves. Baseball evolves. Like, will Babe Ruth still be hitting home runs like he did back in the day? Probably not. Like, would Bob Cousy be good in this era? No. Come on, bro. He would get murdered. Would like it's different. Like football. Like, come on, man. Them dudes that were playing like in the nineteen twenties, they would get killed today. But that's evolution. Like yes. it's, it just has people. People evolved over life. Like you, you can't, you can't. I don't like putting errors together with errors. Like you say, this dude was playing against plumbers. Okay, so if he was, so what? What was there to play against? These dudes do not make what y'all make, so they had to go get another job. Right? True. 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 Okay, so what? So you gonna discredit Michael Jordan because? He played against this dude, this dude. Bro, the league was good back then. It was more spread out. This league is more of dudes that wanted to join together. Like, to this day, some of them dudes back in the day still hate each other to the day they die. And they will never be friends. Never. I don't care. They will never talk ever again. Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas will never talk. They gonna go to that grave not talking. Like they don't understand. Like these dudes now, they'll be cool with them. Like they go hang out, they work out together. Magic and Magic and Jordan they work out. Nah. Like these dudes really wanted to kill each other. But Bird is the one that I feel like he gets disrespected the most because nobody bring him up. It's like he didn't know how to play. Like. The man said, man, Luca is just so much way better than Bird. Okay, bro. Really? Like, I do think some guys could transcend errors. I think Bird could have because this is, a, this is a new lead. Like, if Bird had the same type of technology and the same type of training and stuff that these dudes have now, don't you think he would have been good still? Right? And Bird, part of what people don't know. Bird messed his back up because he was doing work on his own house. The sledgehammer it, it messed his own That's back up. How crazy it is! They tell you they weren't making a near as much money as these dudes now. You would have paid Charles somebody. Barkley. Yeah, you paid somebody to do that. People talk about Charles Barkley all the time, right? 
right? Y'all yeah. ain't really watch him play. Y'all don't know how good he really was. He gets disres- disrespected a lot because nah, he taught, and then like a lot of these dudes now, they so sensitive. He can't talk about me. He he ain't got no rings. So what that mean to me? The dude ran into Michael Jordan. You wouldn't have got a ring either. Mike messed up a lot of rings. Yes, that's why. <laughs> I listen, man, I, I'm cool with people saying Brun is the greatest. I'm cool with that because that's what these kids saw. I was blessed to see him, his career. I blessed to see Jordan's career, Kobe career, and Bron career. I was. Me and Bron in the same class. So I got to see I got to see him. And I still can't believe he's still doing stuff he's doing now. Which I don't think will ever be re- replicated with a dude playing with their son ever again. I don't think that'll ever happen. But my only thing is. This generation discredits everything the prior generation did. Like, nobody was good. LeBron had to play against this, 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 this. Listen, everything changes. Even injuries. Some dude that got injured back in the day probably been the greatest of all time, but they didn't have the type of medicine and things back then. Your ACLs back then. Yeah, you you're done. Achilles, done. Now? Dude told me the other day. He was an older guy. He knew guy that tore their fifth metal tarsal and it was over. Because they didn't know how to fix it. Complete, completely oh, different. It's, it's different. So I just hate that this generation discredits everything people did just to make their argument correct. That's the one thing I will never ever get with. You could have your your likes, your favorites. There's no discredit with other people. <laughs> That's the basketball. That's the basketball on what the stuff that I don't like. Just to I tell me, Brian is the goat. You try to tell me Jordan played against Plumbers. Okay, bro. But guess who was his favorite player? Jordan? Even AI. What did AI say? AI said Jordan is the greatest of all time. He wanted to be him. AI said it. Kobe, Kobe said it. LeBron, recently. LeBron. even T Mac. I think T Mac came out and said it recently, and he played. Yeah, he played they LeBron. all said it. So you that ain't never played out of high school, that that ain't that ain't that ain't even playing college. You gonna tell me who the best player is because of what? Come on, bro, stop, stop it, man. When people on peer said, "I ain't got to talk no more." Cause I'm at the end of the day, it's no sense of arguing with you. No sense of arguing, and like I said, if you could have, we could have a discussion. Cool, where you ain't got to be like, cool. oh, everybody got an opinion. I'm fine with exactly. you. Don't everybody got an opinion. Don't try everybody. to make your opinion. Tell I, me, yes, that's all I'm saying. That's it. That's your opinion. That's how you feel. That's how you view it. That's your preference. Yep. Cool. Yep. But that's how it goes. You 100 percent right. That that's a whole nother episode, a whole nother discussion on time, bro. basketball discourse is in a uh not in the, <laughs> the best of places. Basketball is the worst. I don't even get this in football. I I I have this discussion. You do every not get time. Ain't nobody like, no nah, man, Randy Moss way better than Jerry Rice. You don't get that. You might have some dude say, I think Randy Moss better. For real? Why you say that? Okay, I get it. Basketball. LeBron, the best. LeBron ain't the best then. Yo, man, Jordan ain't play. He ain't got no left hand. Like, bro, come on, bro. Really? It's only basketball. I don't see this in baseball. I don't no, see this in soccer. Nobody, nobody arguing no baseball. <laughs> Ken Griffin, my favorite player. Don't see it nowhere else, man. But appreciate you hopping on again. We thank you for taking time out of your schedule. For those that's watching, if you haven't already, you better hit that subscribe button, share, tell any and everybody about this episode. There's a lot of gems in this episode. And y'all know the vibes here on Benchmob. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. We out. Peace.